What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from ActTheMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today, we're in the middle of awards season. We're talking about the, the big contenders this year. So naturally, it's time to talk about The Crow, the 2024 remake. <laughs> Just going to throw this right in the middle of uh, some heavy hitter awards movies. Um, and Christmas, by the way, also, like... In the middle of the holiday season, you know, this makes sense. This is a great time to review The Crow. Uh, so, some stars, Bill Skarsgård, I don't know why, because he, I don't know, liked a challenge. I, and for twigs. <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> uh, um, and Danny Houston are in this career ender of a film. Uh, and we will never see them again. So just remember them. Write their names on tombstones and be like, who are those people that were in The Crow? I don't remember. That Bill Skarsgård had a promising career. Whatever happened to him? Oh, he was in The Crow. Oh. Now he does Hallmark Christmas movies. <laughs> um, guys, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, I tried to think about this from like perspective. First of all, this does have audio description. Okay, so uh, let's separate that. Maybe I can be a little bit more positive and upbeat here. The audio description of what's happening is very good. There was... Um, one little bit of description. Uh, I always love, like, attention to extremely violent and gory detail for some reason, but somebody loses their jaw, essentially. Uh, it's separated from their, from, from their face. Um, and that was, that was thrown into the audio description. I, I also love when the katana sort of comes through the, the back. Uh, some of those things were, were pretty cool in terms of trying to shape up the action sequences so that they made some sort of sense. Um, and, and, you know, capturing people's facial expressions in, in the right moment was great. And there's a body that falls out of a window and then, like, it cuts to somebody's reaction, which is, like, that of shock or horror or something like that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I think for the most part, the audio description was thanklessly good in a movie that nobody's really going to be like, oh, wow. Like, at the end of the year awards, and we're talking about, like, audio, great audio description tracks, I don't think anybody's going to be like, you know what, The Crow. But, honestly, you know what, The Crow. I mean, he's got these weird tattoos on him, like, in random places, and the narrator found uh, ways of incorporating that into the script so we get more of that uh there are a lot of action sequences and these sort of like world twisting moments um montages to work through uh i mean it's it's a pretty solid audio description track i can't fault it at all the movie though just please watch the original i actually don't even care if it has audio description or not like, if, if a blind person came up to me and was like, I have the option to watch The Crow without audio description, or The Crow 2024 with audio description, I'd be like, just, just try. Please try the other one. Just give it a, give it a, <laughs> give it a good, <laughs> give it a good once over, please. I don't know what... I, I keep trying to think of, like, why did they make this? Like, I, I, you know what? Lionsgate struck out with Borderlands. And I can look at Borderlands and go, oh, this is why you struck out. There are, there are pieces to that puzzle that work. There are pieces where I'm like, okay, that works. Uh, that would have been fine. But then I look at it and I go, well, did we think about letting Eli Roth direct an, or, an R-rated Borderlands? 
first of all. I mean, that's what I would have done. He usually directs R-rated violent movies. Why do you have him on a PG-13 uh, video game adaptation that you know is just gonna, it's gonna suck the life out of the franchise? It's not a PG-13 game. So, but with The Crow, it just feels like, feels like a project that a better director wanted to, to adapt, but then realized they could never actually come up with anything better than the original, directed by Alex Poyas, and they abandoned. And then Lionsgate was like, no, we're not abandoning this, by God. We're going to get this Crow remake, come hell or high water, if we have to force some of the weirdest acting choices in here. I mean, honestly, FK Twigs, like, what is her acting career, you know? Um, and Bill Skarsgård, while I think he has a promising career, it's a very odd choice for this. Uh, Brandon Lee was coming off of, you know, this legend of, of a father and trying to make this name for himself in sort of, uh, kind of like his own like action world it's hard to be known as the son of bruce lee um and what do you do with that but i think brandon really pulled off a memorable and iconic performance if for such a brief film career you know just like this blip in time um and almost a dangerous role to step into also, when you think about it, because it's like, could something happen again? You know, um, but Bill Skarsgård is in this. I don't know. He was, he was fine in like Boy Kills World and, and It, but he just feels so lightweight here. He feels almost too, <sighs> he's a wet blanket. It's just, and I like Bill Skarsgård. I think he brings interesting things to the table. But unfortunately, they've written Eric here as a, just a really dry, uh, sort of uninteresting person that we never really get to know, who we just know vicariously through Fakaha Twigs um, and her relationship to this um, I, I don't know, sort of weird, made the, made a pact with the devil, uh, run of the mill mafia dude played by Danny Houston, who, I don't know, he doesn't get a lot of character actors who do what he does and he just doesn't get hard work. So I guess we're blessed to have Danny Houston in this film because we could have had somebody worse. So at least we had somebody who's trying to work with material given to them. But yeah, for the most part, this is instantly forgettable um it's too long uh that there's stuff that narratively just doesn't make sense in terms of like how the movie ends and what it says about the movie and where we came and like that kind of stuff um just sort of leaves you wondering like what I, I don't I don't understand anyway um I don't think it it definitely doesn't like set up a crow sequel where you're like ooh. They were looking at franchises. So it's like, why did they make this? Like, that's the biggest thing is it's like, if it has no vision, if you don't have a cast that's going to bring anybody to this, like Borderlands, you guys sucked in these top-notch actors. Uh, so you could have sold that on actors alone, on cast alone. And nobody had made a Borderlands movie yet, so no, there wasn't like a previous expectation of greatness. But it'd be like if something remade the Shawshank Redemption nowadays, you're just like, why would you do that? You know, <laughs> like, what the hell's wrong with you? You know, you just, the first one is great. So unless you have somebody who's really coming to the table with something tremendous and powerful and willing to challenge everything that you know and loved about the original film, don't bother. You know, there are other things that you can do. There are other films that you can make. Um... I would call this a career ender. I don't think this is, I think this is something where whoever directed this doesn't direct again. I, I just, I have a feeling it lost money for Lionsgate. Uh, it's, I can't imagine, 
I don't, I don't know what the Rotten Tomatoes meter is for this, but I would love to find the people who enjoyed this and be like, what did you find in this? Did you, have you just not seen the original Crow? Did you not, do you not know what it is? And if so, how, like, I thought about that. Like, if I hadn't seen The Crow, is this a good movie? And I was thinking maybe yes, in the same way that somebody, like, if they had no knowledge of Firestarter and all they watched was, like, Zac Efron's Firestarter, like, it's possible if you hadn't read the book or seen the previous movie to, I guess, like that version. But it's just not the best version you could have gotten. And you deserve better. So this is like being in some sort of like an abusive relationship. And I'm trying to tell you, you deserve better. You need to get out. Get out of this. Stop watching shitty remakes just because you haven't seen the original and been trying to appreciate them for what they are. They're really bad. Now, do I think that you can offer a remake, a fresh perspective, or take something that wasn't good and make it better, or turn uh, a musical like Mean Girls? Yeah, I mean, there are different ways to do things, but those are different ways to do things in ways that feel like, oh, well, that's a fresh take on, it doesn't feel like a fresh take on anything. This just feels like a lackluster take on The Crow. Like, it's not, it doesn't have even the same sort of vibe. Like, when you look at, like, 94 and the kind of culture that The Crow was coming around, and, I mean, The Crow, it was one of the things that really sort of helped to inspire, like, the existence of Hot Topic, in many ways. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, and that look and, and that, that time period... Um, and I'm not saying that you have to go and radically change it and then pull off like a Jared Leto and the Joker, uh, as, as the Joker. Um, but you just have to have vision, you know, and we do have visionary directors. And if some, if one of them had announced that they were making The Crow, I would have been all down for it. If Guillermo del Toro, who put his own stamp on Hellboy, was like, you know what, I really love characters who have weird reasons for needing to go to the underworld. Uh, so I'm doing The Crow. I would have been like, wow, that's a choice, and I'm here for it. But that's not what happened. So I'm going to give The Crow, the 2024 remake, a D. I think it's one of the worst of the year. So it's lower than I gave Borderlands. Um... And uh, I went in very optimistic. I was like, well, Bill Skarsgård's a good actor. I think people are just giving him, oh, no, he's really wrong for this role. He's totally miscast. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for clicking that like button. Love you all. And I'll see you guys on the other side. Yay.